Hello everyone, welcome back to FFG Live. My name is Evan Johnson and I'm joined here today by Caleb Grace. Howdy. So, as you all know, Caleb Grace, lead designer on Marvel Champions, the card game. And we're here today to announce a new hero mm -hmm. uh, who has already been revealed to the internet through uh, <laughs> strange and mysterious ways. Seems appropriate. Yeah, yeah. You know, like these these things, the multiverse cannot be contained and, and so on. Uh, so yeah, it's Doctor Strange. Uh, yeah. We're going we're gonna to show a bunch of cards here today. We're going to talk through some of the development of this guy. And uh, then we'll, you know, we'll end the stream and we'll put up an article with more Doctor Strange cards. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a good time. It's going to awesome. be a good time. Uh, hit me with Stephen Strange. What's going on here? Uh, you want me to read it? Yeah. yeah. All right. re re read me that card. All right. So Stephen Strange is uh, alter ego. He's got three recovery and the mystic trait. Mm -hmm. And he's got text that will make you scratch your head until you read the rules. Yeah. So it says Stephen Strange begins the game with an invocation deck. Okay. I'll stop you right yeah. there. What, what, what does that mean? What's an invocation <laughs> deck? How does that work? So uh, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to come up with something to make Doctor Strange feel unique. Like mm -hmm. he's... He's the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah. He's got all this magic at his disposal. We're like, how do we represent that in the game? Mm -hmm. And also some of the credit, I think, really needs to go to uh, Nate and the rest of the, uh, the department because they were like, we should do something that breaks the standard deck. You yeah. know, it's, it's outside the normal. So we came up with the idea that uh, part of Doctor Strange's power is that he can, he can always cast these spells. Mm. So the Invocation deck, is a, it's a deck of five spell cards that uh, they're, they're their own little pile. Like when you set up the game, you have your yeah, player your deck, deck, and then, then you have this little deck of five cards, mm -hmm. and you always play with the top one face up. Sure. And so when we get to uh, Doctor Strange, we'll learn how we, how we cast those spells. Mm -hmm. And so there's always one available. And that was, that was sort of like the important part for me, is that he always has magic available to him. And that, but that's like the only one available. Like he can't like flip through them and like, I'm going to pick which invocation yeah, I want. Yeah, I think right I, it's, it's been a while since I looked at this kid, but I, I think there's some cards in there that might let him manipulate there are. The, the top of that Spoiler a little alert. bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that you're not always just stuck with that one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of the idea of like, it, it's almost like an extra card in your hand, but it, in, in some ways it's better than having another card in your hand mm -hmm. because there's nothing that can make you randomly discard it or lose it from your hand. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's always there. So yeah, he feels really good that he always has something uh, that he can do. All right, I'll let you keep reading. Though. Okay, yeah, so that was uh, <laughs> the Invocation deck. So then he has this natural talent action discard, the top card of the Invocation deck, limit once per phase. Yeah, so that's one of those ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If uh, we, we discovered in playtesting, there were some of them, if you flipped it top one, you're like, I don't think I'll be able to use that for a while. Yeah. So discarding, though, doesn't hurt anything. You don't have, you're not penalized for going through sure, the so invocation it, But deck. you have to go all the way through before it reaches. Yeah, it, yeah. So. Once, once you flip the last one, then you'll just shuffle them and, and reveal the, the top one again. For sure. But like when you go through your player deck, you have to take an extra encounter card. Yeah. There's no penalty with the, the spell deck, the uh, yeah. invocation deck. Okay, so then on the Doctor Strange I shouldn't, side... I shouldn't mix my terms. Spell yeah. deck and invocation deck. Yeah, yeah, please. You please. want me to read the other side then? We keep it strict and rigid here on FFG Live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no mistakes. Three <laughs> no strikes mis and you're out, No Caleb. mistakes here. We got, we got a tag in Boggs. Caleb dropped the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rep. Yeah. All right, what, what do we got? Doctor Strange. All right, Doctor Strange. He is two thwart, one attack, two defense. He's an Avenger and mystic traded hero. And he has a spell mastery action... Exhaust Doctor Strange and pay the cost of the top card of the Invocation deck that lets you resolve the special ability on that card. Mm. Yeah, we were pretty excited to bring special back. That was something we introduced in the core set with Black Panther. Mm -hmm. So special was like bold trigger word like action or interrupt, but yeah. it's, uh, it's special. It works differently in every case. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So I see a question here just on the invocation deck. Mm -hmm. Will uh, so it is static, right? It's not. Uh, it w there won't be updates. You can't like deck build it. Right. It's, it's not. It's not customizable. Right. It's it's part of his kit. So actually, a little history on that too. Um, he does have like spell events in his player deck, mm. but they're more uh, like generic. Whereas sure. the spells in his invocation deck, if you're a fan of the comics, you'll recognize them. These are the mm. spells he's known for casting. Sure. I think we're gonna get to. Yeah, some we'll of show them. a couple. Of yeah, but that was that was kind of fun, like researching like what are his like most common popular mm -hmm. spells, and so that's why we chose those specific ones. And yeah, th those won't be. Uh, customizable. Sure. So yeah. he's got this this invocation deck, and then he, as you alluded to, he has a number of these like kind of uh, uh, spells in his deck. Mm -hmm. Is the intention then that Doctor Strange is kind of 
more focused on these like one-off events rather than kind of like building up like a board of like assets and stuff. I think that's it's fair to that's one way to look at it. I think all of our heroes are are very customizable in how sure. you play them between the four aspects and then also what you choose to focus on. Some of our heroes are pretty well rounded, mm -hmm. and so you can choose if you want to focus them more toward thwarting or attacking. And I think the same is true of, of Doctor Strange. He's yeah. he's got a lot of wit um, mm -hmm. to to what he can do. And just to clarify on this, so he has his regular 15 player cards and also the five invocation cards. Correct, yeah. This is one of our first packs that, that breaks the, I think it is the first pack that breaks the mold. Yeah. Uh, so that I think players, uh, uh, some some people online, there was some stuff that was kind of spoiled and they were trying to figure out like, what are, what are his extra cards or whatever? So yeah, he actually has uh, more cards that are specific to him in his pack. Sure, sure. So that's awesome. So we also then have what will be appearing on your screen here, uh, some new OP cards for Marvel Champions that correspond to the uh, premium season two kit. So this is an alternate format version of Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's, it's... Is this the comic book cover one? Uh, it's, it, no, it's the no? same. Well, oh yeah, it's, it is the comic book cover. You can see kind of there where it's got... Yeah, you know, that, yeah, it's yeah. Absolutely like, styled, styled like a comic book. I yeah, love those. Those yeah, are they, so slick. They're so good. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are appearing on your screens right now. You'll be able to get those uh, at your local retailer a little bit later this year. So you can talk to awesome. your local retailer for more information on that. And there's going to be a lot of other uh, cool OP stuff coming up as well. That's one of the, my favorite things about this job. Every once in a while, you guys bring something really cool to my desk. And you're like, hey, Kim, what do you think of that? I'm like, oh my gosh, just leave it here. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's uh, head on and look at some invocations. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read one of these. Fire away. All right. I've got Crimson Bands of Sidorak. This is a two-cost event. It's an invocation, of course. And special, stun an enemy and deal seven damage to it. Place this card in the invocation deck discard pile. Mm -hmm. You want to read your invocation there? What do you, what do you got? Oh, we're not, we're not going to talk about well, this. We'll read both of them and then we'll talk. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we got the Vapors of Valtor. This is a zero-cost invocation event with a special choose a status card and play. Replace that status card with a different status card. Place this card in the invocation deck discard pile. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to Jeremy Zwerin. He uh, he came up with that idea. Mm. That was really. He was playing the Doctor Strange deck and testing, and we had like the Crimson Bands, and yeah. he was like, "Yeah, it's kind of the stuff you expect." He's like, "But what about something really crazy, like only a wizard could do, like turning." turn a stun token into a tough token yeah. or vice versa. You know? That's really cool. Yeah. I, I really... Yeah, so hats off to Jeremy. That was super helpful. Yeah. Is So, all right, so we got these two. What what do you see as kind of like the main differences between like these invocations versus like the spells in his main deck? Or like what sets these apart? Yeah. You kind of mentioned that these are like his sort of iconic spells. I think the, the first thing you'll notice is just the, the cost. Mm. Um, like with the Crimson Bands, uh, two cost mm -hmm. for seven damage and a stun. Good. That's super undercosted. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at what other heroes can do, right? So that's that's one of those things because it's a one of in a set, and you have to exhaust them to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, the invocation ones should always just be these like really great feel good moments when you pull them off. When there's yeah. that that bad guy that you're like, oh my gosh, we need to deal with him. Uh, hit him with the crimson bands. You know, you're always happy you see that come up. Yeah. Or the vapors of Altora. That's one that's more situational. That's why we have the. Uh, the alter of ego ability on Steve. If that's the first one when you start the game, you might be like, mm, I don't need that now. Right. I'll throw it away. But when you do, oh my gosh, we had so many great moments. Like I said, where your hero is stunned. Mm -hmm. You know, and imagine you're playing Thor and you really want to swing that hammer, but you're stunned. Mm -hmm. And Doctor Strange is like, I got, the, I got the solution. Yeah. Let's turn stunned. that stun into a top. You're yeah. good to go. Yeah. Or on the on the villain when the villain's tough, and you're like, oh my gosh, I could hit him for eight damage if he wasn't tough. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you what, let's stun him instead. <laughs> yeah. And there's even some synergies with within this, right? Like mm -hmm. if you have crimson bands, it's like we stun the enemy, but we really need him to be confused. Yeah. Exactly. Like we can swap it out that way. Yeah. Yeah. Good catch. Uh, yeah. We totally did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> okay, uh, let's look at another spell card here. So this one is actually in his main deck. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is Astral Projection, a two-cost event. Spell Thwart, hero action Thwart, choose a scheme, remove three threat from that scheme, and look at the top card of the encounter deck. For each boost icon on that card, remove one additional threat from the chosen scheme. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. And so we see... 
with cards like this, and then with the inherent unpredictability of the invocation deck, mm -hmm. that there's like a degree of randomness. It seems like kind of one of the ways that you're approaching yeah. the design of like magic specifically mm -hmm. in Marvel Champions. Like, is that kind of is that the case? And can you speak to like balancing the degree of randomness on cards like these? Yeah, I, I think Doctor Strange different comic Doctor Strange fans will will maybe interpret it differently, but mm -hmm. I kind of like like he really knows how to cast his spells, but it's it's always to me a little bit of a question of like how it's going to affect the individual that he's mm. casting it on. Like there's sure. other forces at play. And so I really like the idea Like he's for sure going to remove some threat. Yeah. But exactly how much is kind of up to whoever he's, he's facing right. and the cards in their deck. And uh, I also love the little storytelling moment with the astral projection. It's, mm. there's a little nugget in there. It's almost hidden. That's uh, you get to look at the top card. Yeah. You know, so you get yeah. a little, a little knowledge of what's coming too. Yeah. A little uh, foresight. Yeah. And so I love that his, when he, uses his astral projection to go and like spy on stuff. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's that's sweet. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's show some new cards. I see people wondering which aspect uh, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. comes with. So he's protection. Yep. Uh, what, what, what was the thought with making Doctor Strange protection? So whenever we think about what aspect to give our heroes, there's kind of two considerations. There's one of like, is there an aspect that this hero just kind of has to come out with? Mm. You know, like yeah. like fans will just be scratching their heads and upset if they, like like Captain America was always going to be leadership. Of course, he kind of has to be. Yeah, you can play him whatever aspect you want, but in terms of like what is most iconic, so that's one consideration. Then sometimes there's heroes that don't necessarily scream one or the other, mm -hmm. and we do need to make sure that we have a balance of all four across our products. So that's the other consideration is uh, maybe we have two heroes that are both really good for leadership, but we can really only do one. So we got to come up with something else, you know. Mm -hmm. So with Doctor Strange, we thought, well, he really does protect the Earth. That's that's yeah. the Sorcerer Supreme. His main job is to protect the Earth from you know all these horrible forces, you know, that other heroes can't see. Um, so protection felt right, both for him and for what we needed in the uh, in the cycle. So it was kind of a win win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's share some protection cards with people. Sure, sure. Do you want to you want to read? We doing uh, which one are we doing first? Which Desperate one, defense. Which one, which one do you want to read? Uh, let's see. Let's let's. Let's do Unflappable, because it'll make the next one even cooler. Okay. All right, so Unflappable is a one-cost upgrade. It's a condition. It says, uh, play under any player's control, max one per player. Anytime you hear max one per player, it should tell you. Yeah. It's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so response, after you defend an attack and take no damage, exhaust Unflappable and draw one card. So card okay. advantage in a card game, obviously very good. Yeah, that's And when good. you're playing protection, you want, usually want to be defending anyway. Mm -hmm. So this card is kind of meant to reward you for what you're already trying to do. Um, so that little added twist of, but uh, take no damage. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of the balancing uh, thing. Yeah. Um, now what's fun about that is you can defend against minions mm -hmm. and still trigger this, because minions don't get boost cards. So you for can be sure. like, I know for a fact I can defend that and do it. But of course, it's really fun. To defend against the villain, that's where most of the damage is coming from. Right, right. And so it creates a fun, tense moment of like, how bad is their boost card going to be? Yeah. Is this going to work can out I for me? Can I do this? Can yeah. I do this? Yeah, yeah. And we see like they got this event here, Desperate Defense. So mm -hmm. this is a one-cost event, defense traded. Hero interrupt defense. When your hero defends against an attack, he gets plus two defense for that attack. Mm -hmm. If you take no damage from that attack, ready your hero. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. That's that's one of my favorite cards. Yeah. We kind of ported this over from the Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think I think it has the exact same name. <laughs> <laughs> but just this idea of like you you want to be defending, but of course the downside of defense is that you are exhausted on on your turn. Mm -hmm. So here's a card that gives you like the best of all worlds. But again, on that hinge of like do I take no damage? Yeah. So when you do though, it's like you come out ready and draw a card that feels really good. Yeah, exactly. What what made this like a, the taking no damage, like a design space that you wanted to explore with this? It just felt really good in protection. That's kind of the goal, right? Mm -hmm. the, the whole point of defending is to mitigate the amount of damage you're taking. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already have a card, um, I believe it's called Indomitable, in the core set mm -hmm. that just lets you ready yeah. after defending. There's no condition that you have to meet. It's just one cost and you're ready. Mm -hmm. So a card like this at one cost and you get plus two defense, without a condition, it would just automatically be better and you'd quit playing Indomitable. Yeah. Um, so having that little bit of a gamble on there, like you're for sure gonna get the plus two defense. Mm -hmm. You're definitely taking that much less damage. Yeah. So, but it does create like, I, part of game design is just creating fun, tense mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. You know, and so that's that's a good one for me. I think that's a fun, 
I, I personally have fun when I play it. Basically, what it comes down to. I really like it. I love that I'm going to defend. I'm going to play this boy. I hope as long as he doesn't get a three boost, I'm okay. Yeah. And that just that moment of anticipation yeah. makes the game experience so much better. Yeah, absolutely. Is this... Uh... So these are cards, obviously, that could be ported over to any other hero. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see any other heroes working like particularly well uh, with these cards, or how do you see these kind of like shaping the protection aspect in general? Yeah, I think uh, I really like playing desperate defense with Captain America. Yeah, you get a shield. Now you're now you're retaliating and you're readying. And if you've got unflappable, you're drawing mm -hmm. a card. You can use that card to ready Cap with his ability on his next mm -hmm. turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that gets really exciting to watch those chain together. Um, I lost the other half of your question. I got so excited to talk about Cap. It was, uh, <laughs> oh, how, how, how do you see this kind of like pushing the protection aspect? Yeah, I think we'll see more of these. Yeah. I think I think this won't be all that protection, protection right. does, but the, you'll definitely see more of these because I think it is. Mm -hmm. We just kind of, just lights went off and people responded positively to this, yeah. this idea. It's like something that feels naturally good, right? Like mm -hmm. in addition to being like the fun and the tension, you know, it's, mm -hmm. like, I, it's like I defend, I still take a little damage. That feels like a little bit bad, but it's like, I defend, sure. no damage, hey. Yeah. I think that's part of that feeling heroic, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you get to be Spider-Man and then talks trash to the villain, like, oh, yeah. you tried to hit me? Well, you missed. Yeah. Work on your aim, buddy. Yeah, like, exactly. Of course, Spider-Man says it better than that. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> He's been working on quips for years. I just work on card games. <laughs> uh, so a couple of questions here. Uh, which hero, now revealed, do you like the most? Oh gosh, um, uh, now revealed. So we have the five in the core set, mm -hmm. plus we've got uh, uh, Captain so America. Uh, Miss Marvel, Thor, yep. Black Widow, Doctor Strange. Right, so we're really just missing one out of this uh, cycle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, mine's pretty obvious. Anyone knows me, I'm a huge Captain America fan. You've got the mug. Uh, I do have the mug. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Uh, I'm more curious to, to hear, uh, like, Michael Boggs or the other designers, because mm -hmm. I, th I think I know I think I know Michael's favorite, but you know they, your friends can surprise you. Yeah, so. yeah. I would I would say that my favorite, the one I'm most excited for, is Black Widow. Oh um, yeah, you like that play style? The, yeah, the preparation like the set, setting that. stuff up and yeah. just letting it trigger, and you know having like a really low HP, you know, and having to be really careful with that. I, I was I was so so pleased that uh, mm -hmm. that Matt wanted to come on and and talk about that because yeah. we went through a lot of iterations. Like, p different people have different design processes. I tend to do a lot of, like... Like, I was the dude when I wrote an essay, I would, like, edit as I went. Like, sure. you're not supposed to. Yeah, yeah. But when I was done, I was done. Yeah. You know, and, and Matt's more the kind of just iterate, iterate, iterate. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, so we went through a lot of iterations with Black Widow. And so I'm just really happy that everyone likes where we ended up. Because yeah. it, was, it, was it was a road to get there. But, yeah, I love that, that um, the whole, like... I've got a plan. Yeah. I've got yeah. a plan. You're about to fall into my trap. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah setting traps. Uh, a couple of questions about Unflappable. Could you trigger that off of a Spider-Man backflip, since backflip is a defense event? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after you defend against an attack and take no damage. All right. So we just, I was wondering if this was going to come up on this uh, stream, because we, mm -hmm. we are currently working on an update to the rules reference. Mm specifically about defense um and that's that might be a conversation for a whole other time mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's something that uh that that boggs and and nate and i are working on so yeah i think the the short answer is uh we will answer that question um probably probably in a couple of weeks we'll be looking to update the rules reference and clarify how how defense works it's going to work just uh, it's going to work a little bit differently than I think is is outlined in the rules reference right now. Perfect. Yeah, I think I think we uh, everything was chugging along fine. Um, there was no question about how defense worked until I think uh, the Miss Marvel pack came out with yeah. like a preemptive strike. Yeah. And then that started highlighting some sections of the rules that we were like, I don't know if we all intended it to work the same way. Mm. So <laughs> it's just it's just part of the process. Yeah. yeah part yeah. of the process of working on a living card game. So. More news on that. Coming More news later. on that later. Yeah. Yep, yep. I've had some some email questions sitting in my in my needs reply folder. Yeah. That I was like, oh, this is a good question. Let's let's unpack this, and then yeah. we started down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you said uh, a little while back, you mentioned that you know there's only one here left in this cycle, which prompted some questions about like what is a cycle? Oh, sure, sure. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, and I think honestly that's just me using old language that yeah. I'm used to from working on Lord of the Rings for eight years, Lord of the Rings and Arkham. 
uh, both very much cycle-based LCGs, right. uh, particularly because of the way the story unfolds through each pack. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marvel's obviously not like uh, Lord of the Rings and Arkham in that regard. There's no story in the packs, just yeah. just heroes. So uh, I guess maybe I need to be careful about it, calling it a cycle. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, like even though it's not organized necessarily in a cycle, uh, to give you guys like a bit of uh, a glimpse into the future, there will be like these these campaign expansions that mm -hmm. we've mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and then those are followed by a number of heroes that typically relate back to that, right? Yep. It's not like an ongoing story. Yeah, uh, I think players will intuitively see, that, just like that we are, are with this first batch of heroes. You're right. seeing, oh, these guys all they're Avengers, they're, the yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, and so I think on the development end, pardon me, they're yeah. still sort of like, uh, we, we kind of look at them like cycles, like we're developing like this batch of heroes together. Yeah. But uh, I think the reason we try to be careful not to like tell people like it's a cycle is because right. they are independent of each other. Yeah, you don't like have to buy all of them to get the whole picture right. like you like you did with our previous uh, uh, cooperative LCGs. Right, it's more of a more of a maybe like a thematic or narrative link rather right. than uh, like campaign or. I think it's more about who looks like they make sense side by side on the right. show. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, having like this team of heroes together. Yeah, I think it's good for the customers to know that we're not just like jumping around from one random hero to the next to the next. I think right. it could be a little bit jarring. Right. Instead, you're, you see like, oh, this batch like, of heroes feel like they belong together. Right, you're not going to get yeah. like a Defender and an X-Man and a Guardian. And a, right, you know, just like, like well, what like, are they doing? What are they, How no, do they pick? That's like, not going to happen. We have a yeah. wheel, we just spin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw darts at... <laughs> no, there's definitely a, a thought process behind it. There's a lot of thematic considerations about which heroes we develop in tandem, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. But I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, we wouldn't necessarily call them a cycle. I don't know what we call them, but you're right. There'll be a there'll be a, uh, a campaign box. Yep. And, and then there'll be some packs. packs. Yep. And then there'll be another campaign box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So whatever you want to call it in between, I think they'll probably end up getting called cycles yeah. anyway. <laughs> you know, people just kind of fall back on. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's let's keep digging into Dark Strange cards and look at. What uh, he's facing down. His, oh, his we're looking at his nemesis. Yeah. yeah, Baron Mordo. Yeah, you want to read that? Sure, sure. So this is uh, Doctor Strange's nemesis minion, Baron Mordo. He's got two scheme, two attack, five hit points. He has the elite and mystic trait. And he's got a, kind of a fun ability that sort of mirrors mm -hmm. uh, some of Doctor Strange's stuff. So he has forced interrupt. When Baron Mordo attacks you, discard the top card of your deck. If that card's printed resource has uh, physical, you are stunned. Uh, energy, take two damage. Mental, you are confused. Wild, all of the above. Whoa. Yeah, so he can really mess you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, it's that, that, yeah, I do like kind of that uh, roulette style of how is this magic going to yeah. affect me. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, me, let me read off Counterspell here. Sure, sure. Uh, so this is an attachment, a uh, condition and spell. It says attached to your hero. Force interrupt when you play an event. Cancels effects and discard it. Then discard this card. So he's just gonna yep. nuke your uh, nuke your spell or your uh, invocation. Yep. Does it work on invocations as uh, well? Let's see. The invocation. They, they say they're events. Yep, yep, they are events. I was trying to remember yeah. when you play an event. Yeah, but yep. the, there's no trait. There might have, at one time there might have been like when you play a spell event sure. or something. Sure. Sure. But yeah, no, it's just uh, it's just gonna cancel whatever you try to do. Sure. And it, it's important to note too, like once this is shuffled in the deck, you know, it could be the Captain America player or mm -hmm. the Black Widow player who draws this card. Got right. it. And uh, that's going to, so he's going to counter your stuff too. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So, so as we've kind of seen in many cases in the past, we've got a Baron, uh, Baron Mordo as the nemesis. It's sort of like a dark reflection of the hero. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, a trend that you're kind of intending to continue for future nemeses? Or do you see nemeses sees nem <laughs> nemeses <laughs> kind of like branching out from that um, uh, and taking a different path? This is another thing where I think if you asked me and Box the same question, you might get slightly different answers. Mm, my, my, and, and I'd be interested to hear, hear what his is. Um, my, my approach has been, um, who, like, who's their most iconic um, villain? We kind of start there, but then someone in the chat's going to be like, but that's Dormammu. I'd be like, you're right. Yeah. But maybe we want to save Dormammu for like a full-on scenario. You know, because we yeah. kind of went through that with Captain America, where it's like he has such a rogues gallery. Yeah. And out of those, we had to say, well, which of the ones we're most likely to do as, as scenarios really soon versus uh, which ones uh, do we want to... So there's a lot of considerations. So it's not necessarily who best reflects the dark side of their self or who's the most popular. There's, 
there's a lot of different variables at play. Yeah. And, and ultimately, I don't know that there is one right answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, um, I really thought Baron Mordo was a more personal yeah. nemesis for him. Um, they have a long history. And yeah, they both wanted to be Sorcerer Supreme. And, and so I really like, he's just a bitter dude. Like, he yeah. really dislikes Doctor Strange. Yeah, you, so you mentioned uh, Captain America. Can you speak to why Barons are naturally evil? Oh, yeah, yeah. Someone pointed out, like, we have Baron Zemo yeah. <laughs> and Baron Mordo. Yeah. I don't know. I don't write the books. Okay. <laughs> it's just like a, like an evil-sounding title, I guess. I, I, in, uh, for these guys, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's look at the last card. So this is not a card that appears in Doctor Strange's deck. It's one of the other aspects. That's right. Every pack comes with some extra cards that are just meant to enhance your collection. Yeah. And because of... The, the nature of the Doctor Strange build, taking up those extra card spots, mm. that meant, uh, like, I'm, I'm sure players have noticed that there's kind of a pattern to the, um, the extra cards in the pack. You know, you're mm -hmm. getting three of each, you know, off color, as we say, like, you yep. know, so if Cap's leadership, then he's getting justice, aggression, and protection mm -hmm. as his extra cards, and it's one card, and you get three of each, you got your full play set, and then there's a basic card. Yep. Uh, so for this one, we couldn't do that because there wasn't space. Right, because the invocation cards. Took yeah, up. it took up some of that space. So we thought, you know, what would be really fun is what if we did? We, we need to do a card that's a one-off. Yeah. But we want to keep our promise to give you a whole playset. So that's got to be unique. Yeah. It's got to be a one predict card. So we thought, you know what, leadership could use, you know, uh, an ally like yeah. a new like that'd be exciting. So we thought, why not do Iron Man? Yeah. You know, uh, for me, one of the most memorable moments in the, in the movies is watching Iron Man and Doctor Strange just, just getting on each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so I thought, wouldn't that be hilarious to pair Iron Man ally in the Doctor Strange pack? Like, yeah. You guys have to learn to work together. Yeah. So Iron Man, has, uh, he's four cost, two thwart, two attack, three hit point Avenger. Uh, pretty standard stat line for, yeah. a, for a four cost ally. But his ability is reduce the cost to play each upgrade on Iron Man by one. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, maybe there's not a lot of attachments just yet or uh, upgrades for allies, but, you know, they're coming. Yeah, I mean, there's so stuff there's, like... There's one of those abilities that I just mean, gets like better over time. Avenger and... Uh, well, that one's already zero, I guess. But you, <laughs> the, the, the first one you're going to think of is Inspired. Yeah. So right away, yep. Iron Man's going to become a 3-3 three, three yeah. for, for zero cost. You're just going to throw that on him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, so this is the first time that a uh, hero in the game is making their appearance then as an ally. Uh, the we yeah, the hero first, yeah. We yeah. had Black Widow ally, ally in the box, then she came as a hero. Right. But yeah, I wanted to make sure we did that early in the game too. It's just people understood right away, like, yeah, you're gonna get to see versions, multiple versions of of every character. These characters are so popular. Yeah. Um, especially if you're playing solo or two player, we're like, maybe no one's playing Iron Man, but you still want them to hit the table. Yeah. Like, I would love to put Iron Man in my Captain America leadership deck. Yeah. 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 So what's the the, the difference, uh, or how do you approach designing Tony Stark Iron Man as an ally versus as a hero? Yeah, this one for me I thought was actually pretty easy uh, to, to design this one. Yeah. Because leadership um, currently kind of has, like, two focuses as far as, like, are you trying to play a lot of allies, or are you trying to play down a couple big ones and, like, build them up with the... Mm. With attachments and so iron man hero is all about those those tech upgrades so i thought well why not make an ally that that leans into that upgrade uh style yeah and is kind of a fun callback to yeah. his to his hero absolutely yeah. and so uh, i see a clarifying question in the stream uh so iron man you could not put this card in your iron man tony stark deck correct yeah, because because yeah. because of the uniqueness rules. However, like if uh, that's kind of funny because it's almost splitting hairs. Now I'm thinking I'm like, you can't have more than one of any unique card in your deck. I wonder if the rules like technically allow you to put it in, but you can never play it. Oh sure, if you could, uh, yeah. I'm the not the sure rules, on that. the yeah. rules might actually like. It, I, I would have to double check on what the the rules actually say. But I remember looking this up because there. But you could not play them. That's for sure. For sure, but yeah. but for heroes where uh, you know multiple people have taken on kind of the mantle of that yes. hero, uh, where yeah. there's specified like different alter egos, you could bring those characters. Correct. Together. Yeah, yeah. So that was a discussion. I remember we had we had an in depth discussion about how are we going to handle heroes that have the same name. Like I think most famously right now is uh, Spider-Man Peter Parker yep. or Spider-Man Miles Morales. Right. And naturally we weren't gonna say like, well, pick one. Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, everybody wants to see, see them fight side by side. 
so we eventually built our uniqueness rules in such a way that uh, if they have the same hero name but a different alter ego, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, you know, then then it's okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. your Iron Man here says Tony Stark, mm -hmm. you know, down there. So um, I guess it's conceivable that there would yeah. be a different Iron Man that's not Tony Stark, and then they'd be able to work together. And do you recall off the top of your head, like if we're playing together and I'm playing Iron Man, and mm -hmm. you got this guy in your deck? Mm -hmm. Could you play him, or would that not? No, I could not play him. Yeah, because I have the... Right, play. exactly. Yeah. Even if you're in alter ego form, where you're Tony Stark, yeah. this says Tony Stark. Yeah. So I can't play him. Yep. No, that's why uh, what we try to do is, is give a lot of these uh, unique allies the, uh, the wild mm -hmm. resource, so that uh, if you ever have that moment where you're like, well, I can't play him, you're like, well, at least he gives me a wild resource. It's good for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are conversations we had too about <laughs> what do you do when uh, you know when that happens. I was like, actually, I kind of look at it like every turn you're trying to decide which cards to play. That's that's the big question I answer. Which of these cards do I want to play? Mm -hmm. And every now and then, I'm okay with having a card that I look and I go, well, I can't play that one. So that that makes the choice easier. I'm using this to pay for something else. Yeah. So it, it just it never creates a moment where you just can't play anything. Yeah. Or at absolutely. least it shouldn't. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, well, that is that is everything we cool. have uh, for today. Do you have anything that you want to say to people before we sign off here real I quick? Don't, I don't think so. Just uh, be patient with me. If you sent me a rules question, I haven't got back to you yet. I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, like I said, that rules reference should be coming in the near future. Yep. Uh, it's going to clear up some things, I think. I think it's going to make things work the way people kind of expect they should. Mm -hmm. So I don't want anybody to be worried about what's coming there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cool. Well, we're going to get the Doctor Strange announcement article up right after this, so you guys can head over to the website and check that out. There'll be uh, some more new cards to, uh, that you can take a look at there. So thank you, everybody, for watching uh, so much. We stream every Tuesday and Thursday, except not this Thursday, because this weekend is the Game of Thrones of Card Game World Championship, Ooh. the final World Championship, in fact. So we're going to be... Exciting and a little bittersweet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're streaming Friday through Sunday, uh, doing a lot of commentary. I'll be sitting right here doing commentary all weekend. Nice. So it'll be good times. Uh, cool. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks to Carolina Game Tables for this wonderful mm -hmm. table. Uh, you can catch this video on Twitch or after the fact on YouTube. And we'll see you guys next time.